What's up? Jake Reed here. Today, I want to give you three ways that you can instantly, well, well, almost instantly, get those sweet 70s drum sounds. Every once in a while, I'll get called up and they'll say, hey man, I got this song for you to play on. It's kind of got like a 70s thing. It, this always happens. Insert name of band or drummer, whatever, album. Oh, it's kind of like Fleetwood Mac. It's like a Steely Dan, Steve Gadd, Percaro, Bernard Purdy. Like a Keltner thing. Kind of like a, you know, John Lennon solo career. Gadson, you know, Hal Blaine, Sly and the Family Stone. You know, like that super tight, or it's like, it's like an early, like a Russ Kunkel, you know, meets, uh... <laughs> kind of like a Ringo, just like dry, dead snare, dead toms. That's what we want. Leave on Helm, the band, like a Laurel Canyon, sort of like Cripple Creek, Joni Mitchell sounding. Totally left out Don Henley. Pretty much insert anyone from that era. So you have to be able to get that sound real fast. Now I know what you're saying. Why would anyone want to tape up their drums that much and deaden the sound? Drums are supposed to ring, to resonate. But here's the thing. It's just a sound. When I talk about getting like a 70s vibe, I don't literally mean I'm trying to get the sound that they had on that record. Because I don't know, I wasn't there. I'm not that drummer that played on whatever. I have no idea how they got those sounds. But I can be inspired by those sounds. I know that there are already like a million videos out there on how to deaden up your drums, how to get these kinds of sounds. But this is just how I do it, okay? So here we go. Before we get started, please, don't forget to smash that like button and hit subscribe. Thank you. Here are three different kits, three different ways of doing it. Kit number one, this is my Gretsch Brooklyn kit. I'm gonna be using just some chamois. I wanna talk about how I'm going about muffling the drums. It's a pretty common way of muffling the drums. You know, you see a lot of people putting towels, tea towels. Uh, that's really good for knocking down some of those overtones and getting that beefy, muted 70s tone that we talk about. There are a couple of pitfalls. Let's start with the, with the snare drum. So if I just take everything off, I'm just gonna show you what it sounds like with nothing on it real quick. <laughs> Pretty bad, right? Oh, it's funny. Let's put this guy back on. Now, here's the key to this. Sometimes I see drummers who put the chamois like way out here, like halfway over the drum, and here's what it sounds like. You can see there's no beef to it. There's no bottom end. We're not hearing the fundamental. It's focused, it's dry, but there's like no, uh. Let's back it all the way off. Barely any muffling going on, right? And now let's listen to it. So you can hear, there's all those tones in there. We don't want, really want that. What if I split the difference? My tape's all messed up. Let's just put another piece all the way over this. All right, let's check that out. I just want to get it a little more focused around the edges, and that's why I do the tape method. So, I don't know, it doesn't even really matter where you put it, probably aren't even where they were before. So it's all about finding the sweet spot of where you're actually putting, that's a little too far for me. So what if we just back it off, half an inch. Already like way better to my ears. So, here's with nothing. Listen to the sustain. Again, it's all about finding that balance, right? I'm just gonna overdo it here. The engineer would say like, oh, you know, sounds a little ringy in there. We got a lot of, it's kind of wide open. Maybe you can just put a piece of gaff tape on it. Just muffle it up a little bit, you know? And so you do it and you'd go all the way out here. Now here's what it sounds like. No tone, right? Let's just back it off a little bit. Again, it's all about finding that balance. Back it off some more. Way better. And then I just wanna focus it in just a little bit more, so that's why I put the tape back on. Now we got some buzzing. So you just gotta toy with it, figure out where it sounds good. Remember, we had it all the way up here, 
not great. Backed it off a little bit. Yeah. All the way at the edge almost. Killer. I love it. All right. So you hear there's like those little flutters at the end of the note. What if I take the chamois and put it way too far onto the drum? Low end disappears again. Still a lot of that low end's getting killed. So let's put it back to where I had it. It's all about just finding the balance. Still getting a deep tone without killing the low end but also not getting a bunch of There we go. This is some old Zildjian I got on Reverb. 16 inch maybe? Old A I got, even though it has the letter K on it. Old A hi-hats, 13 inch. The 16 inch session crash. I'm trying to match my cymbals to the drums. They're quick sounding. They're not super long. Oosh. They're not super long, dark sounding cymbals. Oosh. Without being overly bright. Inside the bass drum, it's all about how much you're muffling it versus not, right? If I muffle it way too much, it would kill all the low end of the drum. You can see the bricks which weigh things down, keep stuff from moving. Some engineers I've talked to even say that all that mass inside helps with the tone. Maybe it does, maybe it doesn't, I don't know. I got my Kick Pillow Pro underneath, which of course has corgis on it. But the pillow's not muffling too much of that drum head. And that's kind of the key to this sound, is you want to get the, the sound of the beater, but you also want to maintain some of that low end. U47 FET and the ND868, it's enough bass drum talk. The second kit I'm gonna use is my 1960s Gretsch Round Badge Gold Satin Flame. Not only does it sound good without the bottom heads, these particular pieces of cloth I'm using look really cool. I just wanted to start with nothing on these drums, just so you can hear how crazy they sound with nothing on them. And actually, there's a piece of tape here. Pretty rough. Now, for the muffling. And you can do this with any sort of cloth. Uh, you can do it with, you can take the chamois I used earlier and just put those over the drum. Tea towels, handkerchiefs, bandanas, whatever you can find. Drum tortillas. But I love these because they just fit right on the drum. Now, like I said. So, you'll notice, this sounds pretty great already. Rack Tom. Sounds still kind of dead, right? So what can we do? Let's tune it down. Let's find where the drum really works well with this, with this muffling method. Let's just try it a little bit lower, see what that sounds like. To me, that's too low. I'm actually liking that a lot. But of course they're ringing a lot still because guess what? Nothing's in the bass drum. For this bass drum sound, Coated Emperor. Boop. I'm gonna put the packing blanket back in. I like to get it right up against that head so that things aren't moving around. Breaks. third kit, which is sort of like my way of doing the vintage modern, it's got the fat deadened sounds, but there's still like some more sustain to it, right? So it's a little more modern sounding. It's a little beefier. This is what I call the hybrid setup because it's like, we don't want to go full 70s. We never go full 70s. This is the 60s Camco kit, 14 inch Craviato. I think it's seven inches deep. Yeah. The 20 inch Renaissance. 22 K-Con, medium, thin, low. You've seen these symbols before in my other videos. 
uh, 20 inch thin crash and then I got these 16 inch Ovidus hi-hats dark and bright modern and vintage and it really complements this particular setup that I have going here in the bass drum just you know classic pillow got the Danmar beater Ooh, Danmar Cool, so how do we get here? Well, kind of already know what the snare is gonna sound like if I take all the tape off, because we did that with the first kit. But let's check out the toms real quick. Woo. Sounds crazy, right? Let's go to the floor tom too. Wow, kind of sounds cool, but not really what we're going for with the close miking, right? Let's tape it up a little bit here. Between the two toms, I want to try to get a similar amount of sustain out of each drum. I don't want the floor tom ringing way too much, and then the rack tom is not ringing at all. We want it to be a nice, balanced sound. So let's just try one piece on the top of each drum. Again, it doesn't matter where you put it. Still a lot of ring, right? All right, that sounded pretty good to me. Let's hear what it sounds like all together now. Very briefly, I just wanted to point out the mics that I'm actually using in all of these mixes because for this super close, tight, muffled sort of thing I'm going for, these like quote unquote 70s tones, whatever you want to call them. I'm going for a really tight, minimal mix. In all the mixes you're hearing, there's no reverb. I'm using all the close mics, so this 414, bad 414. This is on all the mixes, not just this drum set. These two kick mics, these two snare mics, bottom snare mic, hi-hat mic, not even using that microphone. That one, just don't even look at it. For overheads, I'm only using this Coles. I just liked how the Coles sounded. Put some compression on it, add a little smack, make it sound a little closer in the mix. But that's it. I'm not using any room mics. I'm not using the overheads. I'm not using that shoulder mic there. A Little bit of EQ and a little bit more compression and no reverb. Another thing I love about muffling up the drums like this is it really changes how I approach the kit or it can change how I approach a song, like a robot. That's one of the cool things about, you know, having to muffle the drums and go for a certain sonic palette. Then you start to get inside of that vibe and it's not so much about what you're trying to play. You're not thinking so much about licks, cool drum stuff, but you're thinking more about the sound you're making and therefore how to support the song in the best way, which is really, well, that's what's gonna get you called back, right? Not playing all your cool drum stuff, you know. You know, all your double kick chops, your linear licks that you learned out of all your books, all your pair of flaflas and patadoodles. No, just boom, whack, boom, boom, bat, bat. Can you do like more of like a, you know, or maybe it's more like a, that's my favorite when you start getting uh, producers that like beatbox for you. It's the best. It'll happen. So there you have it. Three ways I'm instantly or almost instantly able to muffle up my drums and get those sweet 70s vibey subdued drum tones. Give it a try. Let me know how it works out. Leave a comment. Let me know what's up. Please, is any of this stuff working? All right, until next time.